the, the Houston Texans have the top wide receiver trio in the entire NFL. We talk about that and so much more coming up next during this episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast, your daily NFL podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker. I'm the host of Locked On Ravens and one of the many NFL experts here on our network, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here today and making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every single day and a part of your day in general, free and available on all podcasting platforms. That includes a video form on YouTube and audio form wherever you get your shows. Today's episode of Locked On NFL is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning fight the bet. It's $150 with any winning fight the bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. We're back another Monday, starting off June, or at least we're two days into June at this point. So happy June to everybody. We're going to be diving into a bunch today. We had a lot of wide receiver extensions over the course of the last week. We're going to be talking with Cody Davis of Locked On Texans in the first part of the show about the Texans extending Nico Collins and whether the Texans have the best wide receiver trio in the entire NFL. Then we'll move over to the second part of the show with Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings. We're going to talk about them signing some offensive line help and Dalton Reisner and also them protecting J.J. McCarthy in general. And finally, Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears will join us to talk about the Bears being on hard knocks, but he's seen from Caleb Williams so far and a lot more. So without any further ado, let's first get into our conversation with Cody Davis of Locked On Texans. We saw a lot of wide receiver extensions over the past week, and one of them was Texans wide receiver Nico Collins. Here to talk about that with me is Cody Davis, one of the hosts over at Locked On Texans. And Cody, we know Nico Collins stepped up when it mattered for the Texans last season. Former Michigan wide receiver has really made a name for himself over in Houston. And he was somebody that C.J. Stroud relied on a lot during his rookie year to get himself going. Now he gets rewarded with a pretty big contract extension can you kind of run us through the numbers and if you thought the, the the specifics of it was it an overpay was it an underpay was it just right what'd you think of the specifics of the deal man let me just say that i like the contract that nico got because first and foremost kevin i'm not even gonna lie to you i was a little bit nervous at first because look Nico Collins established himself as one of the most promising wide receivers in the league last year. You know, almost 1,300 yards, I think 80 catches, about eight touchdowns. And he had proven to be this team's number one wide receiver, even with the addition of Stephon Diggs, even with Tate Dell coming back healthy. I still believe that Nico Collins is going to be this team's best wide receiver. One, given his age, he's younger than Stephon Diggs. And two, and most importantly, given the fact that he has the most experience with CJ and at 6'4", big body wide receiver, he's actually, you know, your most dangerous and lethal threat when it comes to that wide receiver position. But when you take a look at the fact that the Houston Texans were able to extend him three years about 72 million dollars man i loved every bit of that deal and uh, another reason why i said that i was a little bit scared and you go you guys can go back on locked on texas and hear me hear myself and my co-host john hickman talk about it anytime we talked about nico collins ever since the end of the 2023 season we always talked about hey Nick Casario and Coach Nico Ryan need to make sure that they extend this man now because yesterday's prices are not going to be what he's going to be asking for a year from now, especially considering that we are expecting Nico Collins to take another jump in it, not only his and not only in his production, but his, in his development as well. So I love every part of that contract. Yeah, and you see the wide receiver market continuing to boom, whether that be because of the salary cap or just the contracts that these guys are getting. You'd rather get it done now as opposed mm. to later when it's just going to cost more money anyway. So mm -hmm. I think the Texans made the right decision. But you mentioned, Cody, they brought in Stephon Diggs, Houston did during the offseason in a trade. You're getting Tank Dell back if you're Houston from injury last year and obviously Nico Collins in the equation. That is a pretty good wide receiver trio <laughs> that the Texans have. Do you think that they deserve to be among the top or even named the best wide receiver trio in the league, assuming everything goes right for them next season? What is your ceiling for what this Houston Texans wide receiver group can be? 
Man, I, I definitely think it, it could be the best in the league, you know, and, and and I'm not saying that, you know, I hope people don't think I'm just saying it just to be a homer or whatever the case might be. But, you know, when you – they just have so many dynamics to that wide receiving core. You know, when you take a look at the top three, like you just mentioned, um, Nico Collins, Steph, Stephon Diggs, and, 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 and Tank Dale, like those three alone, like any – particular team can get any one of those guys and they would definitely take the helm at their wide receiver number one and the houston texans have three on the same team i i, I truly believe that you know they're not going to have a quote-unquote wr1 it's definitely going to go into the matchup and who they're going to going to face off i mean kevin we're in the middle of otas right now and there was a moment during otas where i looked out on the field and they had both Stefan Diggs and Nico Collins out wide, out, out wide, and they had Tank Dell in the slot. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't think there's going to be a better trio of wide receivers in the league that's going to beat them. And that's just those three. That's not even mention the, the the development that we're going to see out of John Mechie, who has been looking really good so far throughout OTAs. That's not including the improvements that we are expecting to see out of Xavier Hutchinson, another wide receiver that, that, that's been looking mighty good so far in OTAs, man. So the Houston Texans, man, I, I just truly believe that that wide receiver trio that they have is definitely going to be at the top of the league. Of course, as you mentioned, if everything goes right for this organization in terms of health and getting on the same accord. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I think this this trio for Houston is the best in the league. And again, you got to make sure it all goes right on the field. But <laughs> in my opinion, like those are just three dynamic, could be wide receiver ones and, you know, however many NFL offenses. Now you have all three of those on the field together for Houston and for CJ Stroud. It helps CJ out a lot. And CJ entering year two, obviously a lot of expectations are going to be on his shoulders this year, especially for a team that won the AFC South last year. And taking into account that this team is going to have all those huge expectations of taking the next step in the next leap. What do you want to see from C.J. Stroud this year, Cody, that maybe he didn't display a ton of last season? What jumps do you want to see in his game? Man, first and foremost, the young man already had a really good year. Yeah, but, of right. course, there's always development that you want to see. And for me, I would say I would like to see him just use his athleticism just a little bit more. And I, I say that because, you know, there was moments where I felt that he could have extended the play by using his legs, you know, getting out of the pocket. Don't want him to, to, to you know, overdo it in, in, in a sense. And, you know, and, of course, there's always a risk of injuries. But if there's a moment to where, you know, say for the sake of this argument, you know, you cannot find your original target or, the offense just isn't clicking right, you know. I I would just love to see um, C.J. Stroud use his leg just a little bit more just to give that, that offense just an extra boost. I always go back to the Baltimore Ravens playoff game that they lost because that was always like the – the benchmark of all of the improvements and all of the the changes and developments that we've seen throughout the Houston Texans offense this year, it always stems back from that game. And and look, Kevin, I, I don't think the Texans were ever going to win that game. I mean, it would have been nice, but, you know, it was just too much too soon for that young team. But the reason why I'm bringing that game up is because if you go back and watch it, I'm pretty sure you remember it, the Texans offense seemed like they just could not get anything going, especially in the run game. And look, I understand. I get it. You know, Baltimore, you know, had the number one rated defense last year. I think they're probably going to repeat that, if not number one, probably two or three. But I think if CJ had an opportunity just to use his, his athleticism just a little bit more, I think that would have been enough just to give the Texans offense is just a little bit more of a push that they actually needed during that playoff game. And look, like I say, I don't think it would have been enough to lead them to a victory, but the final score of what, what was it, like 34-10 or whatever it was, I think it probably would have been a little bit closer because it would have given them something extra that they didn't have. So for me, just use your athleticism just a little bit more. Cody's great, and for more on the Texans, check Cody out over to Locked On Texans Podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up with the second part of the show, we're going to be talking with Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings about the Vikings protecting J.J. McCarthy. Lots to get to still here on Locked On NFL. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's a winner take all the time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big one of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning foul of the bet. It's $150 in bonus spreads, money lines, player props, and more. There's a ton to look at over on FanDuel. The big game 
of the start of the NFL season is going to be Ravens and Chiefs and over on FanDuel. The Ravens open up as two and a half point underdogs in that game. So whether you like the Ravens or you like the Chiefs, you can bet on FanDuel there. Or if you want to bet Patrick Mahomes props, Lamar Jackson props, you can do that over there as well. Visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel America's number one sports book. We're back for our second segment of Locked On NFL. Kevin Allstriker still talking with you here on this Monday. Really appreciate everybody for being here again and making Locked On NFL a part of your day. Also, be sure to make Locked On Sports today a part of your day as well. Peter Bukowski does a great job bringing you the biggest stories about all of sports every single day. So again, Locked On Sports today here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get into more NFL conversation. J.J. McCarthy was a Minnesota Vikings big first round pick. Hopefully, the future of their franchise. We're going to be talking with Luke Braun about just how Minnesota is protecting him and a lot more. So let's talk with Luke now. The Minnesota Vikings got some offensive linemen reinforcements in Dalton Reisner, a familiar face already in the Vikings organization here to talk about that with me is Luke Braun, the host of locked on Vikings and Luke, The Vikings offensive line is going to be really important this year, of course, in protecting a rookie quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. But let's start with Reisner himself, came over to the Vikings in the middle of last season. What did you take away from his stint there when he played? And then why do you think it took so long for the Vikings to make the decision to resign him this time around? Market-wise, like who knows what was going on there. But when he showed up, so he showed up week two as a backup. And at the trade deadline, he had played a couple games as where Cleveland got, I think, a concussion, uh, who was the starting left guard, got hurt. Reisner came in, played a couple games, and they were so happy with that that they thought maybe they could eke out a little bit of value and trade away Ezra Cleveland, who was in a contract year anyways, get a sixth round pick back, start Reisner for the rest of the year. Reisner, by all accounts, did, you'd call it fine. It wasn't perfect. There definitely were issues and For my money, I don't think they got better than they were with Ezra Cleveland, but it was fine. Fast forward now, Reisner was only on a one-year deal. He's in the offseason. He, he, who knows, right? He fired his agent over this offseason though, so clearly he was, something was wrong. My guess is they were just asking for too much money and that didn't go down until OTAs started and he went, oh, okay, I'm like missing these programs. It's time, it's, you know, last year I, he made, I would say the mistake of potentially asking for too much money all the way into the season. And he missed full season bonuses. He missed, you know, camp OTAs and all of that. Like that really put him behind the eight ball last season. And I don't think he wants to do that again. So he's now there for OTAs. He missed like the first two, but that's much better. Uh, And he fired his representation in the midst of that. So I think that also tells you he's not really happy with how the business side has gone. Uh, So now he's, He's there and he's probably going to be in a, in a true blue camp competition for the left guard spot with Blake Brandle, who has been in the organization for about five years now. He's been like a quality backup who they've all been kind of touting as the guy ready to take the next step. Now he's got to beat Dalton Reisner to do it. Yeah. Do you feel like the Vikings have done enough with their offensive line to protect JJ McCarthy? How, what is the state of their current group returning guys, guys they have brought in? Do you feel confident enough in what they've built? You know, part of the reason that it was such a good moment, why why everybody said, oh, the Vikings are such a great destination is because of Christian Darasaw at left tackle and Brian O'Neill at right tackle. Having those bookend tackles for a rookie QB, phenomenal. It's going to be way better than what he was dealing with at Michigan. Um, On the interior, you get questions. They've got Ed Ingram. He's going into his third year. He's been... He struggled a lot as a rookie, a little bit less as a second year player. You hope that development continues. You can't exactly guarantee it. Garrett Bradbury, incredibly controversial figure here in Minnesota, but he's going into year like seven, I think six, seven as the starting center. So he's been around for a while now, whether you like him or not. And then you got this left guard situation between uh, Brandel and Reisner. I I think I was a little bit concerned about just giving the job to Brandel, which is what it looked like until... Reisner came in because he's been a backup his whole career. Suddenly you're just giving him the start with no competition. That's pretty risky. You better be right about how good you think this guy is bringing in Reisner either means we're just running it back with the five we had last year, which played very well. Um, You know, the protection was, was pretty good when the quarterbacks weren't ruining it for you. (laughs) The O-line did. We're pretty happy with, with the way the O-line played last year and you're running that back. I'm good with that. 
Or if Brandel really is the truth and he beats out Dalton Reisner and turns into an improvement on that, okay, then great. Yeah, we take that too. I, I like the idea of competition and Reisner coming in as like a really high floor for the position. We know how good he is and we know unless guys get hurt, it can't be worse than that. That's good. Yeah, offensive line depth is, I think, one of, I think it might be the most valuable depth in the entire league. At least it's up there in terms of teams will always be looking for quality offensive linemen, even if the guys are going to necessarily start to have those options mm -hmm. is this really get hurt really good oh yeah all, all the time and i think it's when you talk about the trade deadline it's like oh this team should go out and trade for an offensive lineman no one's trading offensive lineman because of how valuable unless you're in the viking situation yeah. where you try to eke out that value a little bit and then obviously you well, and you're yeah that's you know yeah. sixth rounder seventh round right. exactly yeah. it, it's, it's really it's substantial. Like, yeah you're not you're not making tyree kill trade kind of stuff okay. <laughs> no. see like trent williams and any of those especially like those are the rare that was really trade. hard to do yeah. too yeah, that, I mean, that, that took them two years for, yeah. for Washington to do it. You you barely see moves like that. So every team is looking for offensive line depth literally all the time. You cannot have enough of it. But speaking of J.J. McCarthy, Luke, he's a guy that obviously is going to have the headlines around him in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Teams are going through OTAs. How has he looked so far? Has it been great? Has it been not great? Has it been somewhere in the middle? What, what can you kind of take? I know there's not a ton you can take away from it, but what yeah. can you take away? Yeah, I, I don't think you want to try to with sure. OTAs. Um, I mean, look, like you could go Zapruder through the 10 clips that we have online and <laughs> say, well, he missed this many and stuff. If you really want to be a, a true freakazoid about it, which I will be doing on Monday's Lockdown Vikings. <laughs> there you go. There you, go. Uh, so you can you can find that, which will probably be up around the same time this one goes up. Uh, but overall, they're teaching him a lot of new things. So you're going to like you shouldn't expect th every throw to be perfect and it isn't. Um but you can see that they're changing stuff about his stride, changing stuff about his hip rotation, um changing stuff about his drop back fo footwork and adding little nuances and, and stuff to that that make it kind of fit with Kevin O'Connell's uh offense. He's taking in a lot of information and and you're seeing him take to it and you know he's starting the the long arduous process of changing those habits which is what you want to see you want to see okay he's capable of changing himself and it might take a little bit of time so if you're playing the vikings in september you're getting sam darnold like let's be honest about that um and that's okay that's what he's here to do is play in september and october uh but yeah he's he's learning a lot of new stuff and so that's what i want to see i want to see like if, if you're bringing in a guy from college and you're not giving him anything new and he just looks like the exact same guy he was in college and he's hitting all the throws because he's only doing what he's comfortable with, that's kind of not good. Like that's kind of not the right, right. idea. Um, it, it reminds me of the old Aaron Rodgers thing where in OTAs in camp, you'd throw a million interceptions because he was trying to learn new stuff every single time. You know, like you don't want to just be on easy mode this whole time. You want to be challenged and, and he's definitely challenged. So he's getting somewhere. You can see that there's a path that he's getting to, whether that path is better or not, or whatever. You can't answer that in May. If you're trying to answer that in May, you, you probably need to call the gambling hotline. <laughs> Yeah, well, one hundred percent. And again, this is the time where you can't experiment with that kind of stuff. You, you don't want to do it down three, two minutes exactly. drill in week one, right? You, you right. want to experiment with it now and figure out, okay, can I get away with this in a game? Can I not get away with this in a game? Am I good enough to do this in a game right now? So it's important to not just go out there and play to your strengths. You got to play to your weaknesses mm -hmm. when the games aren't ready and when games don't count but another big storyline of OTAs and just off-season workouts and general loop for the Vikings is Justin Jefferson yeah, and a guy that best receiver in the league one of the best depending on who you ask I think to me he is the best but regardless yeah. Bengals fans be quiet <laughs> the LSU rivalry is real between yeah. <laughs> Minnesota Vikings fans and Cincinnati Bengals fans but both similarities with those situations, Luke, is both guys not showing up to workouts right now. Now we're in the voluntary portion, so not yeah. as big of a deal as it would be if we get into the mandatory stuff and it's still the same. Is there anything that you can take away that you've heard or learned about the Justin Jefferson situation over the past couple of weeks that you say, okay, maybe an extension is close, or do you think we're kind of just still in wait and see mode? So I'm not a sources guy, but the people in the Minnesota world who are sources people all are are pretty much in lockstep who are trustworthy sources people are in lockstep they're going to get this done and it's just kind of a matter of when and some of the details uh he didn't show up to voluntary otas last year but he did show up to the mandatory mini camp and then like actual camp without a contract so that's what everybody's expecting and if we don't see that then we have a bigger story um but for now it's yeah it's it's gonna be it, it looks like it is trending toward 
an extension at the beginning of camp when is kind of the normal time to extend your 2020 draft picks is 2024 camp four years later. So that's where we're, we're expecting it the same as the Cowboys are expecting it with CD lamb. And um, I, I don't know what's going on in Cincinnati, but everybody, you know, I'm sure uh, everybody has got a good 2020 draft pick. We'll, we'll see that flurry of extensions. Jefferson will just be a part of that. Like normal Luke is incredible. And for more on Luke and the Vikings, check Luke out over at the locked on Vikings podcast. And right here, on Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up in the final part of the show, we'll be joined by Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears to talk hard knocks, Caleb Williams, and more. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. A lot to get to on the show. First, of the show is brought to you by Game Time. And for me, I'm really excited for the NBA Finals. We got Celtics and Mavericks. It'd be really cool to go to a game, honestly. And game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. The prices on Game Time and the app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip-off with kind last-minute deals, all-in prices, use and receipt, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time gets the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. For the NBA Finals, if I had to pick a game to go to, I'd probably pick a closeout game, but that's hard to predict when a team will actually close it out and win. So maybe game one, right? The start of the series, that's where I would probably go. And the game time app has a bunch of amazing features. My favorite is last minute deals. You can save about 6% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. But there are plenty of other features that make the game time app really easy to navigate and the experience in general really great, such as flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing, seat views, lowest price guarantee, game time ticket coverage, and so much more. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Lockdown NFL. Spell O C K D O N F L for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time to the last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. Go back to our final segment of Locked On NFL. Kevin Ostriker still talking with you here on this Monday. Thank you again for tuning into the show today, making Locked On NFL a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day. Be sure to subscribe video form and audio form for five days a week of the, of the NFL coverage. Now, the Chicago Bears got the honor of being on Hard Knocks this year. Warren Cox of Locked On Bears joins us to talk about that. Caleb Williams and more now. The Chicago Bears are in the spotlight. Not that they haven't been with the number one overall pick for all these past months, but they get the nod to go on hard knocks. Here to talk about that with me and more is Lauren Cox, the host of Locked on Bears. And Lauren, I know that the idea of being in the spotlight for these franchises, some might not like it. In fact, I think a lot of them don't like it, but the Bears are the lucky winner of the hard knock sweepstakes. Does this shock you at all? with the storyline surrounding Chicago right now, or was it pretty much a given that you thought that this could be a possibility? Yeah. The bears were one of the few teams that the HBO in the league could force to be on hard knocks based on, you know, how new their coaches and not being in the playoffs and stuff. So we kind of had a feeling that whether they drafted Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick, or they kept going with Justin Fields, like the storylines would be juicy enough this off season that probably going to be the, the team that they pick for that. Certainly uh, bears ownership bears leadership in every capacity has resisted as long as possible and has expressed publicly that they would not like to be on hard knocks if it was up to them but graciously they they must accept and move forward and really i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal because they've already been in such a spotlight anyway everyone has done nothing but pay attention to caleb williams and the number one overall pick so it's kind of just more of the same at that point with some extra cameras but there's already cameras everywhere too like i i don't i don't find it to be like some big threatening distraction like Caleb Williams will be great either way he's kind of used to cameras on him I think yeah just, maybe just a little bit with, with the Caleb on the camera stuff but you mentioned some of the storylines they went with Caleb over Justin Fields Caleb's one of the bigger storylines of not just you know the Bears he's the biggest one but the entire NFL it's a huge one but other than him what are a few storylines that you expect hard knocks to cover and what are a few early storylines you yourself learn are looking at for the Bears as the offseason continues I really hope they dig into the relationship between the Bears' big three wide receivers, DJ Moore, and then they traded for Keenan Allen, and then they drafted Roma Dunze in the first round. And I think being able to tap into how those guys mesh together and blend together and sort of the balance of young, old, and somewhere in the middle is DJ Moore. And not that Keenan Allen's that old, but, you know, you kind of got three different stages of their careers, and and but three guys that are pretty universally respected by their teammates as, like, genuinely down-to-earth, great, human beings just almost a little bit soft-spoken and very much team first guys like I, I think those are going to be three guys that 
viewers at home, whether you're a Bears fan or not, can kind of fall in love with them and fall in love with that storyline. And then I think on the back end of this Bears secondary, you have some interesting dynamics of a bunch of young guys that have all been together for a couple of seasons now. Jalen Johnson, Jaquan Brisker, Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon. And then in comes Kevin Byard as the new veteran free safety on the back end, replaces Eddie Jackson. It's kind of like, you know, the, the old head coming in with all the young guys are already there, but kind of replaces an old head who was already there. So there's the, the dynamic exists. You just got to kind of fit the pieces back together there. So like though, that is a fun group full of personality that I think is really going to shine when the cameras are on them. Is there anything you want to see them do with Matt Eberflus and, and kind of dive into him a little bit, or are you just, you're not that interested? I, I, I would hope they could get into Matt Eberflus. He's grown out a beard this off season and like <laughs> he has become like, Women on social media are like fawning over the new sexy mm. bearded Matt Eberflus. He lo- and it's like he just looks like more stately, more legitimate. Like it, he has gained respect from the fan base from doing nothing but growing out his facial hair. So I wonder if they'll get into that because he's generally not a very interesting head coach. You know, he doesn't say much that's out there or exciting. He doesn't show a lot of personality. He's very much meat and potato stuff. But the beard is the first like, whoa, okay. He's letting his hair down a little bit here, and maybe we can tap into some more of his personality and, and find him to be a little bit less plain. Yeah, so if I want to be a little more respected on the network, I, I got to get a little beard going, much like Matt Eberflus. So we'll get the uh, get myself a little respect points on the Locked On Podcast Network here. But OTAs, Lauren, every team is going through them right now. For Caleb Williams, he being the number one overall pick is going to be a huge storyline in itself. How has he looked so far? Has he looked great? Has he not looked great? Have there been some ups and downs? What does it look like for him? Yeah, it's tricky because, you know, we only get access to like one practice a week, right? So we get these sliver sample sizes of like, okay, on this day, you know, like, like the first one that was open to the media, some struggles, right? Some passes in the dirt and a couple of interceptions and still trying to get on the same page with his new receivers against, you know, a defense that's been together for a while. And it was like, okay pretty understandable that a rookie quarterback might hit some roadblocks along the way. And then the second OTAs practice a week later, that was open to the public. Well, a lot of the starting secondary wasn't out of practice. They just, you know, kind of gave him the day off because they're all pretty experienced. And uh, Caleb slices and dices and hardly a pass ever hits the ground. I mean, people were tracking completion percentage, which I think is a little bit much for OTAs, but, you know, yeah. making beautiful passes downfield, slicing and dicing. And when it's Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and Roma Dunze running against backups, you might expect that. So everything has kind of been as expected, and it's been ups and downs with that along the way. Yeah, it, it makes sense. What about any other players that you've kind of caught your eye or who has caught your eye for the Bears? Has it been offensively, defensively? Who else has kind of stood out to you? It's tough because we're not getting a lot of, you know, there's not pads and physical sure. contact there, but certainly we know that the, the defensive tackle, Javon Dexter, their second round pick last year, He's stepping into a bigger role in the middle of this defensive line, and he has looked leaner, faster, stronger, everything they wanted to do from a body perspective. And, and like part of his game was like needing to have a quicker get off from the line of scrimmage and keep his pad level down. And we're able to see more progress in that area at this stage of the process. And then there's also on the other side, a big open center competition that they're rotating back and forth. And both guys have both guys have been fine. Again, it's harder to tell because they're not full contact, but at least you feel like, okay, it's not like clearly, oh no, they don't have a center. It's a matter of which one of these guys is going to prove to be the better option. And then I feel like you've got a pretty good competent backup behind them. Lauren is awesome. And check him out over at the Locked On Bears podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. That's all I have for you here today on Locked On NFL. Thank you so much for tuning in. When we get back here tomorrow, it'll be your Tuesday host coming at you with more NFL content. So be sure to stay tuned. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked On NFL.